Purdue is messed up. That's for sure. A little late recap of the Purdue game. We are, uh, obviously, we did not do a post-game show because yours truly was at the game. And uh, we didn't do a show yesterday because I had a flood in my house, which we'll have to we'll talk about that, I'm sure, <laughs> at some point. On the second floor, nonetheless. I know. Yeah, it was really, really hairy there for, for a few minutes. But we have shop vacs and carpet vacuum machines that are designed to do this kind of thing which is funny anyway uh thank you and welcome to the fighting irish faithful show on a late wednesday night that's what happens when stuff happens in your life and your kids don't want to go to bed (laughs) (laughs) but we will talk a lot about running the football um notre dame versus purdue uh and kind of where we are at as a program right now um hold on hold on i want to know first off what was it like walking into work on monday Oh, okay. So if anyone didn't hear or see this, yes. Um, first off, let me introduce myself. I am Joe at Faithful underscore Irish. I'm joined by my brother, my co-host on the West Coast. We're Red Snapper 9098. You should change your uh, your name. Like, like, don't change your handle. Leave that at Red Snapper. But like... Above that, you could say West Coast Irish if you want. Yeah, I should. You always say that, you're West Coast Irish. I do. We are brothers, and we are here to talk about Notre Dame football. Um, And, yes, I do work with a bunch of Purdue people. So, on um, Monday, well, first off, at place I work, um, there's kind of this tradition. If something good is happening in your life, you bring donuts. So, like, you have a kid. You buy a house, you know, you, you know, stuff like that. Um, you bring in donuts. And I uh, was feeling very good about Notre Dame beating the snot out of Purdue. And so I said, well, I'm going to bring in donuts and rub it in. Now, it wasn't just bring in donuts. I was wearing all my Notre Dame stuff. My coffee mug was my Notre Dame coffee mug. And uh, the, I printed the score of the game. 66 to 7 on the drum put it inside the donut box so if anyone lifted up the box they would see the score on the world's largest drum and that wasn't it i also sprinkled a bunch of green sprinkles all over the donuts so it was very apparent what uh that i brought the donuts in just to kind of rub it into Purdue's nose. Um, I kept hearing things from coworkers about uh, Notre Dame's practice in West Lafayette, um, <laughs> stuff like that. I talked to multiple people who were there at the game, and they all said that they left early. So Judas also left early. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, no, the game was fun. Uh, I I uh, went with some some Knights of Columbus people, um, and overall the experience was good. Not only because of the scoreboard and seeing Notre Dame rush for a billion yards, it seems <laughs> three hundred sixty two on the ground to be exact. Um, but no, the overall it is my first experience at an away uh, stadium since going to I think USC in nineteen ninety eight. So it's been, it's been a minute since I've been to an away, a true away game for Notre Dame. We have been to Lucas Oil Shamrock Series. Yep. Um, I think that's the only other stadium too. So, and that's that's basically a home game. But that was against Purdue as well. So anyway, um, but my overall experience and opinion of Ross Aid was was good. Um, number one, beer is sold there, so so that's that's fun. Um, lots of Irish people, a uh, lot of Notre Dame supporters. Grant, that was my section. We were in the north end zone there, um, where I got to see uh, uh, Jadarian Price uh, run straight into my lap. We got to see very easily and well the Riley Leonard amazing touchdown where he stiff arms the guy at the five. Um, so that was cool. Um, also, this is, <laughs> this is a little odd but uh my bathroom experience was very good at ross aid it like unlike notre dame stadium where you have to wait in the line it seems especially if you're on that second level uh but ross aid stadium, like bathrooms everywhere and like it's like weird it's under the stadium but you have to like go down you open a door you walk down a couple steps and you're there um 
nothing fancy. You're pissing in the trough, whatever. But I mean, in and out, like it, it, I, it just me must be the the availability of of bathrooms, um, or the lack of Purdue fans because they're all departing as the game goes on. I don't know, but um, yeah, that those are the goods of the stadium. The bad, um, it, it it's annoying. I think I'm we're just the experience at Notre Dame is is really really good where they have the ribbon boards um on the on the sidelines on both sides of the stadium and they're constantly being updated and showing the stats uh ross aid's not like that it's it's the, you look at the jumbotron in the south end zone and it's this little sliver on the right hand side and it's really small and so i'm sure if you were sitting on the sidelines um it would be much easier to see but from our vantage point in the north end zone and we were basically up at the top um eventually we went bunch of people left because it was so freaking hot and Notre Dame was killing them. Uh, you know, we, we got to stand and I, got, I, not, Oh, and I did get to stand the whole game. I didn't have any, there were some Notre Dame people behind me. Um, there was a Notre Dame guy and two IU guys there. So they were hate watching on Purdue. Um, so they were loving Notre Dame beating the shit out of them. It was great. Um, but yeah, no stats. Um, it was very difficult to hear the announcers too in Ross Aid. Um, I didn't understand how, you know, this quote great u- engineering university they can't get the sound system to work right. Like we couldn't hear Jack. Um, I couldn't tell what the guy was saying. It was like, huh, who, what? So, so you were back at Chino High School again? Ah, uh, it wasn't that bad at Chino, but. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. <laughs> remember, remember at Damien how it would echo back and forth. Yeah. You have this crazy oh, yeah. echo. Um, yeah, it wasn't like that either. But yeah, oh, Chino was terrible. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was funny. Yeah, no, it was just like it was like faint. Like I don't know. It's it's just probably how the how the speakers are oriented, and there's nothing, you know, pointing towards us or something. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Notre Dame Stadium experience is far better, way better. Like, you know, like 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 the like you know when it's third down at Notre Dame or or you know play the get up and go, be loud and noisy stuff. Like Purdue did that, but it wasn't it wasn't as noticeable. It wasn't, and they weren't as good about showing the replay on the jumbotron that they are at Notre Dame Stadium. I really think Notre Dame Stadium is doing a very good job at that. I mean, I haven't been to a game this year, but in past years and we've gone to games, it's been very good um, about showing the replay. And I think part of that is one of um, my other bad critiques of Ross aid is the fact that um, way too many ads uh, like from this company or this person or this group or just like ads constantly cycling through. And like someone even was like, Oh, did you see the, the ad for our company? And I'm like, well, no, like I, I, unless it popped up a bunch of times and someone's like, well, there's usually just one during the game. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not why I go to the game. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I did not see an ad by, from my employer. Um, but it's really distracting. Cause I'm, I'm trying to like turn my head because like from where we were in the, the North end zone, right. When it's like third down and something like third and five or third and long or whatever, like I, I, my vantage point is very difficult to to assess uh, where we were. Now there was a stat kind of ribbon thing behind me to my left, where it would say third down and and eight or whatever. But it was also one of the same screens that they kept cycling ads on. So I'd say about half the time I was able to to check what the down and distance was. Otherwise, I was seeing you know something for, you know so-and-so grain company yeah i don't know <laughs> but overall good experience uh notre dame is a much better experience uh than purdue which thank god right because purdue is, does not have a good football team this year um yeah they beat up indiana state um but it was i wouldn't say i was surprised with the outcome um because it's one of those things like like clearly I think it's safe to say that Notre Dame played angry. Notre Dame was ready to go in there and, and take out their frustration on someone else. It's fun to beat the shit out of Purdue, 
But let's face it, it's Purdue. And this team has a lot of problems over at Purdue. Um, and they could do nothing against Notre Dame, um, quite frankly. Um, I mean, look at the scoreboard. Notre Dame delivers the worst loss to Purdue in their program history. Um, and that is kind of fun to take ownership of that. So take that, Purdue. I, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, you know, li- you know, watching it on TV or something. Uh, at least it was a CBS broadcast, right? So you, oh, definitely. you guys got a really good broadcast. That, that, and that was kind of the one of the like, like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> I like the CBS crew. I think they do a fine job with their production. And, well, I'm going to go watch the game in person. I won't watch this. You know, instead I'll you know, Peacock will be waiting for me in a couple weeks versus I think that's a Louisville game too. So I don't know, <sighs> but uh red snapper, what are your takes of the, of the Purdue game? I mean, we, I, I haven't talked really about the game at all other than, you know, you got your, I was been talking about stadium experience and my donut uh, experience. <laughs> it was a blast to watch. It was fun to see. Hashtag RTDB, literally all game long, um, showing just the difference in a run threat. I want to see more play action, and it was. It, I thought it was extremely comical that we spent the first three quarters pretty much, you know, running the ball, running the ball, running the ball, mm-hmm. and then the first series that Angeli gets in is a pop pass to a wide open. <laughs> I died laughing. Like, Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, that's what a pass looks like. Uh, I know. What are passing <laughs> touchdowns? I haven't I seen dying. one. In, it's been yeah. what, January, so, December since we've seen one. I don't know. Yeah. So when I, was the bowl I game? just, I laughed and I was just sitting there, Busting up, going well, you know, yeah, Riley. It was Leonard, December, okay. December 29th he, he is, is the last time we saw a passing touchdown. He definitely showed that he's a runner, and if the game plan goes the way it is, you know, I think the biggest takeaway, unfortunately, into the negative is all of the injuries. Yes, I have that. that Lots is, of injuries. Wow, it came. So this victory right came with a price, definitely. We're going to recycle the offensive line again oh and reshuffle and refigure out everything again. So, yeah. all right, get back on your blocking scheme from the jump. And here we go again. Yeah. So, and then you got Bethello who's out, which, which really hurts. He, it, he yeah. was the one carted off, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a program and I didn't pull up the roster, so I didn't, you know, whatever. And no, I did not read everybody else's article from, you know, Irish sports daily or one foot down. Sorry, people. Um, but yeah, the, um, I should probably do that at night when I'm sitting in bed rather than watching YouTube or something, but I watch it. So I would, su- I would suggest not just because you're going to get upset when you see a bunch of it. It just like, uh, Jabron Payne out for the season. Yeah. Like that was a surprise to me yeah. on the injury report. So that, that one was, Oof. I mean, you we know, got get Aeneas Williams in there. We'll, we'll take care of it. But I mean, we got love and price. So. And, you know, I mean, it's I don't know. The 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 injury thing sucks. And it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, we could talk about it. But it's like it's still so early in the season. And I think it's safe to say that Notre Dame is growing as a as a team still. Um, the unfortunate thing about our upcoming opponent here, a little brief. And this is kind of like the answer to the test here. I don't think that we're going to see anything with Notre Dame versus Miami of Ohio. That's going to answer some of these lingering questions we had going into Purdue and, and coming out of Purdue. Um, I I think we're going to have the same questions and we should see the same outcome. We should, should. We should see the same play calling. It it literally. Uh, Yes and no. I mean, uh, it, yeah, I, I've got like an internal conflict, you know, piece here. It's not really a stat piece. It's kind of just more Joe's monologue here of of the game. But yeah, the um, to 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 rewind a little bit about the Angeli pass. So I was, you know, multiple times during the first half. You know, we're seeing Riley Leonard throw a bad pass, um, or not throwing a pass to a wide open guy, right? 
and you know pick your poison on which uh, particular one you want to talk about. But at the end of the day, um, so I'm I'm chatting up with people around me, you know, who are Notre Dame people, and and we, there, our section was really good. I'm I'm. I I had been drinking and so I was that obnoxious yelling person. There was a woman to my left who had like eh, they weren't little kids but they're probably like middle school, right? And I did turn to her and said, "Look, if I'm being too much, just tell me. I will happily tone it down because you're here with your family, right?" Um, but there was a lady like two or three rows down from me. Totally she, she her name is Karen because she didn't tell me to sit, but um when Ray Leonard like did a boneheaded thing passing, um, I started screaming, hey, put an end jelly, right? <clears throat> and then there's there were multiple other people in front of me, around me, they're all saying the same thing, like, yes, we need to put go with end jelly. Well, Karen, on the other hand, did not have the same opinion. Which resulted in a little bit of a shouting match <laughs> between me and her. Okay. Y'all don't want to hear me coughing. Good Lord. Ugh. But anyway, yeah, I'm like, she's bringing up stuff about like, oh, he's the starter for a reason. And I'm like, well, why? You know, zero passing touchdowns in, you know, two games, you know. Or I, I think I had dropped something like <clears throat> no passing touchdowns in 10 quarters or something. That's what I was telling her, so. Yeah, has uh, got a little shouty there in Ross Aid Stadium. Me with this lady, it would have been great if I had uh, recorded the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I absolutely died laughing when I saw that. I was like, "Oh, second play of the game for Angeli, and it's a touchdown, passing touchdown." I love it. It was great. <laughs> well, why don't we get some people here? Uh, we got William, Jimmy, Joe, Coach Barsegian. Why don't we bring on Coach Barsegian? Because I know he he wants to talk about the uh, Riley Leonard thing. Uh, we'll give him an opportunity to to throw some rocks and bricks his way. Unless he's not unavailable. But uh, Coach Barsegian, welcome back to the Fighting Irish Faithful Show. <clears throat> Thank you for having me once again. It's been a long evening. Did how was the softball game? We won the first, and then we played the only undefeated team. And it was a little bit of back and forth, but we weren't able to beat them. There are a bunch of ex-college athletes that are mm. swinging hot bats like a baseball swing. So, Ooh. like. HF coming with a bunch of strikes on the ball. Hey, hey, coach, you're you're breaking up pretty bad. Is there a special side of the road you can drive on to get a better <laughs> cell phone reception? Or ah, uh, well, it, can you hear me? That's better. Whatever you did, okay. do yeah, that. It, well, it's I'm not driving. The wife is driving, but I mean it's. It's like a 45-minute trek to where I play softball. So. Oh, my goodness. Tell her to drive faster. I just happened, just happened to tune in at the right time. But anyway. No, it's all good. It's all good. The yeah. um, <laughs> so, so, look, on one hand over here, we had a boatload of rushing touchdowns. And we got to see really – I think what the, the positive thing about Riley Leonard here is that – I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you down here just so people don't don't hear the uh, the waterfall that is your commute. But I'll turn you up when I finish my question. On one side, you had Riley Leonard doing the Riley Leonard thing, scrambling, juking, jiving, stiff arming people. Three rushing touchdowns. I am not gonna be pissed or, or upset about that. I'm actually really really happy and excited to see that. However, you still didn't throw a damn passing touchdown, which is annoying against. A shitty Purdue team, quite frankly, and they were shitty. Okay, <laughs> this is one of the worst Purdue teams I have ever seen. Um, to which, uh, on Monday, one of the comments in the office was, "Well, I you beat UCLA. Now that looks like a scary game for Purdue now." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, all the other all pro IU people in the office were happy, but I got I got asked the question, Coach, like, like 
what where do we make of this on one hand i've got this rushing attack that he brings and is very unique and effective against purdue but on the other hand nothing from um, the passing game it it makes me very nervous when we play louisville and it makes me very nervous when we play usc i think i think that's very true yeah like uh, USC like, is is a much better team than they were a year ago, I think. Okay. And because they don't have I, Caleb I, Williams, is that why? Oh. Yes, they don't have drama <laughs> queen that is Caleb Williams. But and they have a better defense this year. They do yes, have a better do. defense. I'm just I'm I'm still mind blown by that one play where the pocket to him seemed to break down in his mind in like two seconds. And he starts to scramble. Does not look upfield at all to a wide open receiver, ten yards from the goal line. Yep. This time he could have flung it forty yards, and the guy would have got it and scored a touchdown. Yes. The closest defender to him was a good twenty yards away. Just, just look upfield. You'll yeah. see. Yeah, that's the problem. He's not looking. That's yeah, exactly. I think he, he's looking to run. Like he's he not looking to find to the guy. Look. He's scared to look, doesn't want to do it for whatever reason. He's Which not is afraid dumb. He should know where his guys are. He should know He's what route the run. He's not afraid to take a hit from the defender going the opposite way of his block <laughs> into the, goal the end line. zone on a run. Yeah, I saw that. And But he won't He won't look up to throw the ball. It, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very strange, and and I don't know. Again, and we kind of talked about this in in the last show we did about like, is there some like weird psychology thing going on with him about, you know, him in the pack pocket? You know, he's he's having flashbacks to, you know, getting his leg rolled up by Notre Dame. You know, I don't know the the look. I want him to be successful, and it's like I need you to throw passing touchdowns as a quarterback. And, and and I don't mean that because to forego the the rushing. Like if it let me put it another way. If he had thrown if I had one passing touchdown and two rushing, I'd be happy. I wouldn't be saying anything. Well, I, I was gonna go further. I was gonna say if he had thrown two passing touchdowns and three rushing touchdowns, we'd have a completely different opinion. You know, people who are like and, and shame on our fan base on this app. Sorry, Elon Musk. But people on this X app who are like, Riley Leonard for Heisman when they see him stiff arm a Purdue guy. I'm like, first off, it's a Purdue guy. Number two, look, him just rushing the football is not going to get it done. He has to throw passes. And no team worth a damn, kind of like what you're talking about, Coach, with uh, Louisville and USC, who are the two toughest teams remaining on the schedule, right, per team rankings.com. But, you know, we can all look at, you know, Sagarin and see where they're both ranked, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but, no, you're 100% right. Like, like, it's an unsustainable model, I think, that Notre Dame is working with right now. A good team is going to stack the box, load the box. I mean, shit, Georgia Tech could po- probably do this to us. Um, they will yep. force us to pass. We don't play Boston College this year. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, I I don't even want to go down the list of of teams that are really good in rush defense, right? Because um, that's certainly not Miami of Ohio. Um, but it, I mean, they've played Northwestern and Cincinnati. All right, big deal. Um, but but a good team. You know, like like Clemson of yore or Georgia, you know, who's probably still really good. They are really good. Um, <clears throat> I mean, look at Texas. What the hell is going on down there? And what did I say last year? Texas is a team that scares the shit out of me. Okay. And I said that last year. Um, and they're and right. I think the right. Uh, let me verify this. But they're number one in Sagarin, Texas. Yeah. Texas, then Georgia, then Alabama, then Ohio State. To touch on Angeli a little bit more, because I just thought of this. I saw some talk here and there on X, like, well, Angeli just took a sack. Leonard doesn't take sacks. No, because Leonard leaves the pocket every two yeah, seconds after he snaps the ball. Exactly. Like, I, I, I'm fine Angeli has with, balls to take one and, and <laughs> to the, the grill. Was, it was 49-0. to zero. Who cares at that point if Angeli's taking a sack? Right, exactly. It, it, it was a blowout because he started the second half. 
but I'm perfectly content with Angeli not having to use his legs as much and being able to throw the ball when you've got love and price to hand the ball. Exactly. Agreed. Exactly. Agreed. exactly. Who needs a mobile quarterback when you've got those two guys? Well, and, and here's another thing that, that concerns me about our, our amazing rushing attack. I mean, uh, look, I'm not trying to like spoil anyone's party here. I'm, I'm, we're trying to be objective because we've been hurt before, right? We don't need to, you know, bask in the, in the glory. Like, look, 24 hour rule like enjoy the win i mean i must have watched highlights you know three times in a row once the night i got home and then twice the next day you know you know it, it gave me such joy watching that game in person and then reliving it you know while you know rocking the baby to sleep you know happy happy fighting irish faithful don't get me wrong However, now that I've watched this a few times, I've analyzed things like, okay, what are we doing well? What are the even better ifs? One of the even better ifs of rushing the football is that we just have superior athletes over Purdue. And so we can just run around the edge. Like we just price or love just they're fast enough. They're athletic enough that they can just pop out and run around a defender. Kind of like, you know, their best impression of Reggie Bush and score touchdowns you know like the same with and same and same with riley leonard he can and he he, he's maybe doing a little bit more of a juke you know to make someone move not that price and these other guys aren't but at the same time it's like uh you know like we're, we're we're running we're doing that high school thing when you just run around the edge i mean there was one to close out the first half wasn't there uh Yes. He was trying to just... Yeah, that was Price. ...get away from the defender, but there was nobody in front of him once he got by him, and it's like, okay. Price is I'm like, oh, go. okay, yeah, okay, touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this one to the house. Fine. And that was after the pick six, too, so... Which was the dumbest play by Hudson Card. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> was, I'm like, we saw it. We're like, did he really just do that? I think some of the Purdue people around me left after that, you know, right before the half. So they didn't even see the price touchdown. So by the time they got to the bar and they checked the score, they'd be like, oh, shit. What happened after I left? You know? <laughs> All right. Uh, Coach, final thoughts, and then we're going to jump on to our next person. Because Miami of Ohio is one of those rinky-dink teams, just like teams. Northern Illinois. <laughs> let's let's not let this blowout of Purdue get to our heads. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I think uh, I think that's uh, <laughs> yeah. We we are still ha looking for a win in South Bend, and that, and that's a fact. So. Coach Going into week four. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Coach Barcegian on the X. Uh, we'll go over to uh, at Jimmy underscore Joe 24. Uh, he's requested to speak. We've made Jimmy Joe our speaker. Welcome back to the Fighting Irish Faithful show. Jimmy Joe, are you there? Hello, namaste. I'm so happy. No, oh, no, good. Sorry, Jimmy Joe. Jimmy oh, Joe's back. Boy, what a game. You call it a blowout? Yes. Oh, a definitely. Blowout. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, we gave Purdue their worst loss in program history. You know, 50, 59 points. I mean, it's like, yikes. Well, you know, I, it, it, when I think of our quarterbacks, I think of, of Mr. Leonard. You know, I think of him as somebody just running the ball in. And, or if he throws the ball, it's just a short pass. So I kept thinking, oh, we like Angeli, because when he goes in, he can throw the long pass. Yeah, it's depth. It's downfield. It's not just a swing pass to the right. They're vertical passes. I, I will say get, this, though. Yeah. Riley Leonard got robbed because he had a great pass to Great House. Greyhouse had the the sickest move where he actually the went the call. opposite direction. He the and he he's call, yeah. yeah, and then it's a holding call. And we were we were so pissed in the stadium. We're like, uh, we were like, yay, Riley Leonard finally got a really good pass, you know, and a good you know move by the receiver in space. 
and it doesn't happen. It was a play that Great House, that, that was a pass that was behind and late to Great House in Northern Illinois. Very similar kind of play, except it wasn't a crossing route. It was kind of like an out route that, that Great House then turned it into a, a, a back and up or something. But no, I'm, I'm with you, Jimmy Joe, that, that Riley Leonard seems to just like be doing the dink and dunk stuff. And he's, he's looking very short, short centered, kind of what, what Red Snapper was talking. He's not looking downfield. He should know where his guys are. He should be reading the coverage of the defense. And so, okay, they're in this position. This is this check. All right. They're cycling or whatever, but he's still just looking nearby. He's like, he just doesn't even attempt it downfield. And I don't know if he yet doesn't have the arm, the confidence or what. Well, you know, down the line here, you know, you got to look far away. You can't just look at the people in front of you yeah. always. And, oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking when Angeli came in, I thought, oh, we're going to throw some long passes because he's the passing guy. And the uh, Leonard guy, he's the he's just the running guy. And then Angeli, he runs the ball in. I'm going, oh, that's good because he can do that, too, and throw the long passes. I don't know if. And Jelly had a had a Min- rushing Min- touchdown. Oh, I, I know Minchie did. Oh. Minchie had a rushing touchdown. I don't... Oh, maybe it was the other. I'm, I'm and Jelly trying... had a 26 yard run. I he had a run. I, I'm just saying, like, like he didn't punch one in. That's that's. I guess that's no. where I'm going. Well, I want to know, what does the coach say to Mr. Leonard? Yeah, he had a long 29. All of a sudden, it's like a different person. Like, all of a sudden, is he worried that he might lose his number one position as the quarterback? I would hope so. If you don't, don't you know, <laughs> you're not throwing passing touchdowns. You're, you're, you're not give. you can't be a liability. You, you need to command the offense and move the ball downfield. Okay. Now, maybe Northern Illinois is this really, really good football team and they, they, got Notre Dame off guard and Notre Dame was overconfident after, you know, they're eating the big steak. That was Texas A&M, you know what I'm saying? But like, here's where I'm going. Now there's some, take this with a grain of salt, but Riley Leonard plays basically the first half and, and jelly plays for kind of the better part of a quarter. Right. Yes. Because, because, you know, we saw, we saw Minchie go in there and we saw CJ Carr. Now CJ Carr didn't attempt to pass, but he was in there and he he was he did run victory formation for us, right? And at that point, mm-hmm. I had uh, like like so many people had cleared out. It was like 5 minutes left in the game. So I walked all the way down to a uh, field level and I was probably about 3 4 rows up from the front, kind of on the like the corner of our end zone right there on our sideline. Um, and there was a bunch of people that Notre Dame people, there was a few loyal Purdue people. So respect to the cap to them. But, um, we were all waiting for like the alma mater or something to happen, which didn't happen. The team just immediately left the field, which we thought was strange, but I'm also kind of like, well, that's, I'm okay with it too. But for Angeli to play for basically a quarter with nine passing attempts, he got a hundred yards and two touchdowns. (laughs) He averaged exactly. he averages a touchdown every four and a half passes. Okay. Leonard, on the other hand, throws 16 attempts for 112 yards, zero passing touchdowns. Now, no one threw an interception, which is cool, you know. But it's like, ah, you know, it's just like like now you can make the argument that Angeli is against the scrubs. This is garbage time right in here in the third quarter or whatever. You know, fine. I don't know. I, I'm I'm not looking at Purdue and what they're doing because I didn't see Purdue doing anything different schematically. Purdue kept Purdue kept their starters in the entire third quarter. I I I, I, know, did, I would have to go watch like film to look at and chart plays. Different. But the 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 thing is though, like I'm just seeing the vision and the touch on the ball and, and what Angeli is doing that Riley Leonard just refuses to do. And, and 
I don't want this to turn into the bash Riley Leonard show again. We we do this for out of constructive criticism again for the concerns of against good teams. It's like this is an unsustainable model right now for Notre Dame. I love that he's rushing for three touchdowns and stiff arming people. I think that's great. Let's let's give him a bell for that. Okay, I'm just saying like. I, I need you as the quarterback to also excel in these other things, which is so weird for me to like be the run the damn ball guy. On one hand, I'm like, run the damn ball, you know, like, and, and if all you need to do is run, okay, to win the game, then yeah, you go do that. I, and I'm not going to step away from that. But on the other side over here, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> I want you to pass too. So I feel, I my feel, favorite pass I feel like a, a hypocrite. Angeli threw, yeah, my favorite pass that Angeli threw wasn't to the wide open tight end for a pop pass. It was the drop the ball in the bucket. And I want to say it was to Great House for like a 27 yard yeah, game I'd have to down the right side. The plays. Like that, that was a perfect placement pass. He threw it perfect right over his shoulder, right in the basket. And that that right there, to me, is the difference between Angeli and Leonard. Leonard's not looking downfield. He's not looking to throw the ball. And he doesn't have the touch to put it right in the bucket for the receiver. You know what I thought was interesting? And maybe this is one of the reasons why uh, <laughs> Riley Leonard wasn't connecting well. I mean, who's his favorite receiver from the previous game or the previous two games? It was Bo Collins. Mm-hmm. Collins ended up with nine yards on two receptions. You know, he was definitely not, you know, Cooper Flanagan, Mitchell Evans, Eli Reardon, Jaden Harrison, right? Like, like a bunch of these other people are, are making contributions and Bo Collins is quiet, you know, of, of everybody on this team, he averages the least, only four and a half yards per, per catch. But it's because he's the downfield threat. That's the thing. It's I guess, you know. Threat, and he's not looking downfield <laughs> at him. Or That's was, and I didn't, I, again, I'd have to watch watch film, you know, where it was Purdue, like, really, like, keying in on Bo Collins from their film study. You know, I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, that, that seemed possible um, as a strategy for, for Purdue, but... The um Oh you you know one thing I was thinking about I think that Mr. Leonard he's he's worrying about two things. NIL, what two things, Jimmy, NIL, NIL oh, he's, or... he's he's worrying about being hurt in the pocket and I think he's worried about throwing an interception. You're okay. not wrong there. Yeah, I'm. I'm not, not gonna. Ar- I'm not gonna argue with you there. I. I think that that may be what's going on in the back of his mind. You know, he didn't have a great game against Northern Illinois, at all. Um, he and I don't have a problem with him not not wanting to, you know, throw interceptions. But that can't be a hindrance. You know, like like you can not want to throw interceptions, but still throw the deep ball and put the ball in a location where only your receiver can get it. Right. You know on the sideline type of thing on a fade or whatever, you know, like (laughs) there are things you can do as a quarterback to, you know, give your receivers the best chance without you being dumb. Like don't throw across the middle. Like, like that's step one, right? Number two, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're rolling out and you're right-handed only throw downfield while you're rolling to your right, you know, like that's a more comfortable, natural way to throw. Now what's funny about that. Is I think it was Angeli's second touchdown or his first. I don't remember which one. Yeah, he's he rolled. In he's rolling left, and he has to throw across his body, and he throws a passing touchdown. I was like, okay, that's very was, difficult to do. <laughs> and it was to the momentum side of the tight end. It was hilarious. Yeah, like it was so a I don't, great pass. I, I, that was that was a little unexpected. I don't know if he. I I would have to rewatch that play again. To, like, was it broken? I highly doubt it was designed that way. I mean, unless they've worked on it in practice, and so he's got the mechanics down on that. But if that's the case, you're running mechanics like that kind of a pass and that particular play. Then why the hell would you not just start him? You know what I mean? Thank like, you. so 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 I I'm not convinced that 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 was like 
designed to be that way because that's that's kind of a dumb play in my opinion but at the same time it's like it was successful so you know you, know, you can be dumb and successful at the same time so <laughs> oh you know when i was watching the game i was trying to see you i was trying to look for you oh i'm there i'm just microscopic and you have to have like a really really like 8k type of tv to like zoom in on me you know like like one of those fancy iphones or you know what i mean like yeah no we uh or I'm up at the top. I'm in section 115. You know, <laughs> like like if you um like they always have the cameras at uh you know at like 12 o'clock or whatever. You know what I mean? Like at the like like deep center of the end zones, right high up, very top. We were just to wow. the left of them. Okay, and yeah. actually, actually, so there was there was the CBS crew. There was like like a camera or two of them. And then up in the same platform, there was actually a Notre Dame guy. And so I, I started chatting him up like at halftime. I was like, hey, are you with the university or whatnot? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, are you like Notre Dame Fighting Irish Media? I'm like, nice. You know, and so so we got we chatted a little bit, you know, so he uh, he's out there, you know, avoiding sunburn just like the rest of us. But uh, yeah, so we were so to, to answer your question, Jimmy Joe, uh, up in the the north end zone and the bowl there away from the jumbotron um just to the if you're looking at it on tv to the right of where those cameras were at the top okay yeah yeah all right jimmy joe really appreciate your contributions on the purdue game uh and let's go take that momentum as we go into miami of ohio okay go irish go irish thank you jimmy joe for joining namaste the... namaste namaste jimmy joe i really want like like there's a, my neighborhood has a large sikh population so there's a lot of like and there's more and more indian restaurants popping up which is great um mm -hmm. it takes me back to my time living in the united kingdom which is you know british indian curry if you've never had that you're missing out on one of the most delicious foods you'll ever eat. I'm sorry. If you have not had British Indian oh, curry. Oh, that is so true. That is so true. Bye -bye. Oh, it's so good. Uh, but anyway, like, so so I, I've got a couple people here that are like, oh, you got to try this place. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll give it a go. Uh, William Frazier has requested to speak and join the Fighting Irish Faithful show. Welcome back to the podcast, sir. Live podcast Joe. on a Wednesday. Joe and company. How's everybody today? Yeah, what How are you doing there, sir? I, I've got an internal conflict. I don't know if you, you heard my, uh, my conundrum here. On one hand, I've, I'm like really happy with RTDB. And on the other hand, I'm like, throw more passing touchdowns. You know? <laughs> It's like we're not doing good in one stat, but we're really good in the other. So it's like, okay, we are a hundred and eleven. We are a hundred and eleven I mean, in passing. There's touchdowns. really not much to really <laughs> talk about against Purdue. I mean, we're not gonna. I don't. I think we're wasting time talking about that game. Because, Agreed. Uh, you know, they were what? just so, they were just awful. My podcast Purdue is a waste awful. of time. That's what I just took from. No, I'm just no, 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 no. <laughs> Slow down. I, I wouldn't be fine. I really felt that way, but I think that uh, what the next caller. Up, okay, no, I'm just kidding. Con <laughs> continue, continue. What's coming up is is like I said. I keep talking about it, man. Louisville. I mean, we shouldn't look past. Uh, we should not look past. I was going to say, are you looking past? Take care past of business them? first. Don't look past you those MAC no, teams, no, man. We've, we've none been, of us should we've be been looking past bit any by MAC that teams before. with an zero and three record with Marcus Freeman. I hate to cut say you know turds a turd, but is it that you know, bad? Three against MAC. Yeah, 0-3 against MAC teams. Wait, who's the so, third? Uh, well, Northern Illinois. No, Marshall, Northern Illinois, Marshall. Marshall, Marshall Northern Illinois, and um, I saw the stat. Maybe I'm maybe it made me a liar. I'm pretty sure it was 0 3. I'm not calling look back you a liar. I'm, I'm just looking at no, MAC I'm, teams. No, the stat I thought I read was 0 and 3, so I, I have to look at this stat again. But uh, anyway, moving yeah, on. We haven't uh, played Kent State. Uh, no. We haven't played we're, Miami of Ohio in a long time, but. So, Bowling Green. Anyway. No. Buffalo. Bo Toledo. Bowling, Bowling we, we got a scare from Toledo the weekend yeah. my eldest son was baptized, and that was the first time Red Snapper was in the studio. Huh. Well, it doesn't matter. 0 2, 0 3. The point is, is that oh, Mark oh, Shane oh, has yet oh, to oh, beat a freaking. 
hasn't beat a Mac team yet, and that's because I don't think they take them seriously, and they he better wake up and treat all components because any given Saturday, anyone can be beat. That's a fact. That is true. Yeah. So, you know, people, one team gets just riled up and just zeroes in on one competitor and just gets ready for that team. And that's what Northern Illinois did. That's just yeah. a fact. Back to the math. And so, once we take care of Miami, I'm telling you, man, Louisville's going to be a problem if we don't get this whole passing situation under, under order, you know. And I don't know what else to say about that except that uh, Jim Brock better get with Riley and figure it out. Maybe it's a yeah. trust issue with the line and Riley and, and the Dooley. Yeah. And, yeah. And like I said, well, what's he, what's he doing? I mean, is he. He's supposed to be developing these quarterbacks. I mean, he's he's mentioned. only. I mean, l- l- all right. A couple things. How Riley Leonard when he showed up, you know, had surgery. He didn't play in the spring, right? Um, we don't know exactly when he came back in the summer. We also don't know the specific rules. I mean, someone who's more knowledgeable about this, by all means, chime in. But there are specific rules about the amount of time that that coaches position coaches in this case can be with their players, right? I'm not talking about the training staff for the strength and conditioning program. I'm talking about actual coaching mechanics, you know, gaduli with players, right? They can't do that in the middle of July, right? I'm like 99% sure of that. Okay. So, so now it, it now becomes a math problem. You have X number of practices of, time that Gaduli can be with these players. I think it's safe to say, I'm going to go on a limb here that he, he has not spent an adequate amount of time with Riley Leonard versus say Minchie and Angeli. You could even argue since CJ Carr was an early enrollee, probably since February, he has spent Gaduli has spent more time coaching Carr than he has Riley Leonard, based off of his, you know, physical fitness, health, injury, post op, recovery. Right. So. Agreed. So Agreed. so I'm Agreed. so 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 I'm not gonna be be throwing any. I'm not going to be throwing anything at Gaduli like, oh, Gaduli, you're to blame. Like, no, I mean, I, I do think Gaduli has a responsibility to do the, some of these things. But at, at, when Irish JTL was on, he said uh, on our post game show from uh, from Northern Illinois, he basically was saying like, you have a coach that uh, has one philosophy, right? Leonard with a certain skill set, and Den Brock with that's calling plays another way, and nothing, none of those. This is like a Venn diagram, and you want all three of them to intersect, and that that is not what is happening. All three of them are actually like engineering terms, uh, far apart. Okay. No, nah, that's more of a like a like a critical thinking logic thing. But the um, yeah, if I was then I'd be talking about Boolean logic and code and like but even even loops. the CBS announcing crew, Gary Danielson, even made a crack about how limited the playbook is we'll just do the same play and we'll just flip the you know the line of scrimmage we'll, we'll just you know flip the field you know and so it's just it was it was funny well, but at the same yeah. time it, it cut a little deep like they were even broadcasting showing that oh well you know we ran you know a counter quarterback counter to the right now let's run the quarterback counter to the left like it literally was they were they were joking on it now i will say this what what is what is the 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 famous quote you play to win the game if purdue is letting us and i've said this before if they're letting you run all over them run all over them right don't get me wrong you don't have to start getting cute and just be like, well, we should be passing more. And so, like, try to force it. You know, like, look, you're there to win the game, right? So then it's like, eh, you know, like, that's why I have this, like, internal conflict. Because it's like, on one hand, I'm really happy we're running the ball all over Purdue. But on the other hand, I know in the back of my mind that, what do we talk about this show? Stats of National Champions. You have to pass pass well. You have to be 12th in the country in passing touchdowns, not 111th. Okay, like, no, we're not even close. We're like an order of magnitude off of where we need to be. Um, and, and that's passing touchdowns, right? Like, 
The rushing is great. We're playing above the rim on that. It, it, it's fabulous. Okay. Like keep doing that. I'm not saying stop. What I'm saying is it's unsustainable. And I'm we're I'm, I'll be honest with you guys. Like, Per Sagarin, we should we should we should beat everybody on the schedule. Everybody, there is no one left on the regular season schedule that is better than us in Sagarin today. This is and the, you notice I'm mentioning rankings now. We're three games in. The qu- season is a quarter of the way through. Okay, now Joe will start looking at rankings. Okay, here's where we are in the AP. Right, you know we're 17th. Right, we're we're you know, seventh and Sagarin. Okay. The six teams above us will repeat them. Number one is Texas. Number two, Georgia, three, Alabama, Ohio state, Mississippi, then Oregon, then us. Okay. And that's Sagarin. That's math. It's based off strength of schedule. It's based off margin of victory. It weighs your more recent games heavier than the, the previous games. So coming off a huge win is, is big, right? Um, we played, you know, two power five teams, right? And won both of those games, which is good. So like, like, and, and our strength of schedule right now is, is decent. It's 22nd in the country, right? It's actually the best out of every, all the six teams above us. Okay. But all these other teams on our schedule, right? Um, Louisville 21. Okay. USC, they're, they're the quote best team remaining on the schedule, uh, but they're 14th in Sagarin, right? We are loaded for, and, and prepared from, from where we're ranked and, and where these other two teams are. It's like, I, I'm, I'm with you, William. We, we got to, you know, Louisville is going to be a test. It's also in our own house, okay? And we're apparently wearing <laughs> green that jerseys. That doesn't hold much water, sir. I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. we're wearing That's green sweet. jerseys. It's the green jersey game, right? Isn't That's also called? been hexed out too, <laughs> sir. <laughs> So please spare me on that. I I'm, mean, this I'm... is not 1970s anymore. <laughs> There's no wooden Trojan coming out of the freaking, you know, built by the student. Those students wouldn't even do that today. They wouldn't even do that today. Should we, That's should we the, make you know, a, should we make a, like a, like a cardinal wooden cardinal nest and that we something an but egg, the, a... I want to back up. Let's, let's back up on the point you brought up about the fact that, you know, Dooley, he's had all this time with, you know, the other quarterbacks. By that logic, wouldn't it be wouldn't it say that we would can try to convince Angeli to come back one more year and he would be our guy? I mean I, I don't I don't know the <laughs> the specifics of his eligibility. I assume he does still have I think he's a junior, is he not? Uh we can pull up the roster here. Someone else is is more savvy with that can. But no, all right, continue. All right, so so <laughs> you want Angeli to come back? I assume. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying by that logic, with all this, I'm just trying to say. Well, how if you do this, this guy that's supposed to be able to mention these guys, and they're not, and if he's worth his weight by next year, there's you know, Angeli should have all the answers. Should be able to work not flawlessly but way better and we wouldn't have all these hiccups we should have a developed quarterback that we've always had time with for three years now three years and i'm just going on with your with that train of thought that's all i'm saying i I mean we definitely i I feel bad for kenny mitchy i don't think he's going to stick around he should probably transfer I, i do think he is the largest uh risk of a flight risk you know i mean angeli has been there for so long he's been working on his degree from the university of notre dame it would be my hope that he would stay um minchie i'm not so sure about um I, and like I'll, I'll say this about angeli like other other than like a boneheaded pass against yeah you know, i think it was against Pitt or something where he, he comes in and he throws a pick um yeah i remember that <laughs> other than that in general, you know, from the bowl game to his performance in, in multiple spring games to, um, you know, this game, there's very, most of the evidence of Angeli is positive. Okay. The only thing that's not positive is he's not quote knighted as the starter from the head coach and the, the offensive, you know, coordinator or whatever, you know, and it's like, 
to which you know if anyone missed my my shouting match discussion earlier with the karen up in the stadium where i'm i'm trying to be an advocate for angeli okay and i'm i'm screaming at her basically saying i'm not screaming okay i was i was screaming at her but it was loud in the stadium um but i'm i'm just embarrassing everybody around me saying like look <laughs> and jelly was admirable in the bowl game um and, and then he th- and then i get the last lap i mean she had left the game by the time and jelly actually came in and threw two passing touchdowns um right. but it's it's like look, you have to pass you have to be good and and so i'm just saying look I think the frustrating thing for us as fans, and, and we've talked about this in previous shows, is that with Angeli, it's like I'm not seeing anything that he's doing, especially now, that makes me not want to play him. If anything, I'm seeing things that Riley Leonard is doing now that makes me not want to play him. Hmm. Agreed. Okay. Right? That's and and, and, I, and if and that that's looking at passing in a vacuum, okay? Um if if the goal is to win the game and give us the biggest opportunity to do that again it, the the running lanes are wide open who's the better running quarterback you know we don't even have to talk about this of course it's Riley Leonard right and like Angeli can't stiff arm somebody while tiptoeing the line you know as far as we know now if he does then the coaches are stupid but i don't think that's what's happening right so the coaches look Everyone saw from CBS to America to everyone at Ross State Stadium saw why Riley Leonard is a starter. That's what we saw, right? The rushing, the explosiveness, the athleticism. Like, we saw that. Despite his bad reads on blocks and not being able to see receivers downfield, we saw the positives and really high positives of why he's the starter. And I'm in the stadium watching this, and I'm like, yeah, that's why he's the starter. So I'm not going to like say the coaches are stupid per se when I see that. But the problem I see is I don't know if he can do that every game or can he do that against the good teams, Louisville, USC, or, you know, a playoff type of team, right? I'm not trying to look that far right. in the field, but I mean, that's what we should be planning and preparing the team for the long-term stretch of a playoff, you know, situation going to New Year's six bowl and fucking winning it. Finally, after 30 fucking years. Yes. Okay. And, we're going to drop that. This is with a young reshuffled offensive line. Oh, Again. geez. What you don't, you don't like that being reminded of that. It's a young offensive line. No, I mean that's just a fact. Like I'm there's nothing to hide from. It's just what it is. You know, that is reality, right? So yeah. so you know, three step drops, find your guy, or throw it away or scramble. Right. That's not Riley. That is not Riley. Riley has a hard time seeing the field. That's my point. If he doesn't see something within the first two seconds, he's running. I guess that's yeah. that's that's what he's seen. Well, and it and it takes most routes longer than two seconds to develop. Right, and then unless the coverage he, is really, really bad, <laughs> and then when he does see something, maybe even a glimpse, his accuracy is just not there. Yeah. So yeah, there are windows of so time. So that's, a, that's not a good up. place to be. That's not a good place to be for mm-hmm. a quarterback, you know. Yeah. Now, I don't know how they're going to fix it. If they can even fix it. William, are you uh, are you going to any games this year? I'd love to. Uh, being in North Carolina, it's kind of hard to get up there. And every time I look at any games, like I even looked at the uh, Georgia Tech game for Atlanta, and they, the seats pricing was just what insane. Well, and if you're so, in if you're in South Bend, the, the 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 issue is not the cost of your ticket in Notre Dame Stadium; it's the cost of your hotel or wherever the hell you're going to stay. Notre Dame. Right. Uh, like the last the last time I went there was back in two thousand and four, and. Willingham was the coach, I believe, still. Oh, God. And oh, no. I fucking stayed at a uh, hotel, <laughs> like this flea bit hotel just east of the, of uh, South Bend and uh, on the on the turnpike, and I said never mm. again. Never was it again. next to a Hooters? No, I mean, oh, it was okay. literally out in the middle of nowhere, right off the highway. Because like, that, that was the one that was we stayed at. Oh, okay. That was the only place I could get, like, at the time, I, you know, I was way younger, and I didn't have, like, a whole lot of money. I'm I was lucky to get the tickets. Nice. And uh, 
So, but hey, uh, I think uh, we'll do well. Uh, my score prediction is thirty-two-nine. All field goals for uh, Miami. Okay. And uh, that's it, man. Uh, go Irish. Go Irish, William. Thanks so much. Uh, appreciate. It. Hope you can get to a, a game to cleanse your palate after <laughs> after dealing with uh, Coach Willingham. I have too many, too many bad coaches over the last four, almost forty years now, and it's just, it's just, it's to the point where I just, I had to shake, just sit back and go, oh, well, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, they they haven't hired you as AD, so there it is, what it is. All right, uh, let's see. Thank you, William. Um, all right, we talked about Joe's internal conflict. Um, we're worried about loading the box. Um, I kind of want to steer it a little bit over to Miami of Ohio. Obviously, if people want to talk about Purdue, we can. We're a little over an hour into the show right now. This is the Fighting Irish Faithful Show, proudly part of Dos Leprechauns Media. Oh, and if no one saw... Um, and this is to our a lot of our regulars. Or if anyone's coming to the uh, Stanford game at uh, at Notre Dame Stadium, we we yours truly will be there. Uh, and we now have a banner in the sky to fly high. We have a flag for the show. It will be under the stars and stripes um, on our telescoping flagpole with our vehicle Sweet. in North Lot. So we now have a literally a bat signal up in the sky that people can actually, you know, it would be tight if we did get some lights that, but it'd be daylight. So that won't work. But I'm, how, how, is there a way we could like rig a bat signal? Yeah. I mean, people are going to be tailgating today. All right. Sorry. This is where my brain went. But um, no, we have a flag fighting our faithful podcast logo ish flag. Uh, we'll be flying so our, our people can find us. We've got 30-plus uh, people uh, coming, people bringing their spouses. I will have my wife and children there. Red Snapper will be there. Coach Percy, Gian, a uh, ton of people, friends of the show. Um, and even if you're not coming to the game or you're a local, drive in, say hello, have a beer. Eat a brat, you know, whatever. <laughs> like it's, uh, <laughs> we are looking forward to meeting our friends on this platform on X and uh, uh, people who are loyal to the show. It's uh, it's it's fabulous. It's wonderful, and uh, yeah. So the flag, check my timeline. It's there. It's black. It's got the it's got the logo. We're uh, we're ready to rock and roll. All right. Uh, I see that Mike Selzo has been listening to us for a while. If you want to speak, you have invite has been sent. If you just want to listen, that's fine too, Mike. Um, but you are welcome to join us. Appreciate your listenership into our uh, our nonsense over the last uh, few minutes here. If not, we'll go over to Jeff, uh, a coworker ish of Dos Leprechauns. It's great. Coach Welsh says Marshall is a Conference USA school. Understood. Uh, thank you, Coach Welsh. It's fact checking us here. It's not in the spreadsheet. I don't have these uh, these other programs in the spreadsheet. Although the Marshall loss was pretty bad. It's bad because it was Marshall, not because they're from Conference USA. I mean, we lost to fucking Tulsa, and I was at that game too. So <laughs> that was bad. But at least that was a close game, and it was like more like, oh, we got an injury, and oh, Tommy threw a pick. Like, yeah, Ugh, no. All right, uh, let's move on. Um, I have a note here, and it's kind of a kind of like the overall opinion I have. Like, okay, we beat up Purdue. Does this mean Notre Dame is really good, or does this mean that Purdue is really bad, or is it a little bit of both? And I think it's a little bit of both. I actually think Purdue is going to have a losing record this year. Um, their coach is still pretty new. Ryan Walters, though, was hot shit coming out of Illinois, and rightfully so. I actually thought it was a decent hire but from Purdue. Uh, but let's face it, like Notre Dame picked them apart. Um, you know, Purdue's still dealing with some talent discrepancy. Um, and, and though they beat the hell out of Indiana State, it's Indiana State. So, I th I think I think Purdue is is got a lot of work to do, and uh, I do think Notre Dame is a good football team, and I think we got a taste of 
the goodness that can be Notre Dame this year in 2024 versus Purdue and their nonsense and whatnot. So I think it's a little bit of both. Now, going to Miami, Ohio, I, I saw or read an article that Miami, Ohio was actually potentially supposed to be one of the better teams in the MAC conference this year. Well, they're 0 and 2 right now, and they're not good at all. Okay. Uh, they're ranked 94th in Zagrin, so that's not good. Uh, their four year recruiting on talent is 87, so very inferior even to Purdue. So. High level, just looking at those two things. Oh, and and uh, by the way, Chuck Martin is still their head coach. Okay, this is his 11th year. He's been with Miami of Ohio since 2014. Recall he was our assistant uh, OC quarterback coach for our 2012 magical season, etc. Um, so Chuck Martin's still there. Um, but high level, looking at Purdue's talent, record strength of schedule da 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 we'll probably see something very similar in notre dame stadium this saturday what we saw in purdue so does the purdue game tell us a whole lot about notre dame no is this miami of ohio game going to tell us a lot the answer is also no so it feels like for a couple weeks in a row other than maybe just saying hey we beat purdue and we have a shillelagh trophy with them cool uh, which I saw. It was on the sideline, by the way. Um, we're not going to get a whole lot out of this Miami of Ohio game. Now, if it's a close game, then we will get a lot of nonsense out of it, right? But if it's – if we, we should cover the spread. It's 28-plus points, right? I don't think we're going to get a lot of this Miami of Ohio game. Uh, am I wrong, Red Snapper? I don't know. I think we're going to see a rubber stamp of the Purdue game. I think it's going to be a Riley Leonard three touchdown rushing game again. I think we're going to see Angeli come in for a quarter. And we're going to see Minchie and <laughs> Two Tarr passing again. touchdowns. I, I, okay. no. I, yeah, I, I 100% believe it's going to be a rubber stamp, almost exactly the same. And I would hope that they're going to spend some time practice this week with Riley Leonard really focusing on – keys to throwing the ball downfield. If he wants to even get anywhere near the Heisman conversation, then he's going to have to throw yeah. 200 yards passing every game from now to the end of the season. And the only passing way it's happen is and passing looking touchdowns. downfield. He's got to look downfield. He's got to learn to throw his receivers open. And the only way that happens is by staying in the pocket. So it, we'll see how it transpires, but I think he's just, he's got the jitters. He can't sit in the pocket. He doesn't want to sit in the pocket. He's yeah. not He's not going through progressions, and that's the problem I see. Yeah, the uh, um, the passing, like, like the play calling is actually a little higher on the passing on average. Now, during this Purdue game, it wasn't, you know, I mean, I mean, we, we, I mean, we had a good completion percentage, 69% uh, as a team, okay, not, not, looking at quarterback specific, but as a team. Um, so, so that's cool, but we ran the ball 63% of the time. So that's actually a little high. Um, but I mean, hell, if that's what they're giving you, you know, take it. Um, uh, but for the season, we're 54%. So it's actually a little lower, um, and a little higher on the passing side than I personally would like. So what that tells me though, is there's more opportunity for Notre Dame to be successful uh, and the, I, I think the play calling and play selection is is open <laughs> to more more passing plays available to Riley Leonard. The pro, the thing that really bothers me is our passing attempts per touchdown. We've had 89 passing attempts and two touchdowns. Okay, 44 and a half passing attempts for every touchdown on average for three games. That is terrible. That come from it's Steve Angeli. so bad. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you do it. If you just put Angeli in a vacuum, it's completely different, right? But Notre Dame as a team, which includes Riley Leonard and Steve Angeli, right? It's absolutely atrocious. National champions. I'm not even talking Heisman's. I'm talking national champions in this stat. Average a passing touchdown every 13.6 attempts okay so we're not even close to sniffing that 
Now, what we are doing well is rushing attempts per touchdown, okay? We're scoring a touchdown every 10.6, less than 11 attempts. We're touching the ball. We're scoring a touchdown. This is like Brandon Wimbush stats of, of scoring a touchdown every 10 times you touch the ball. Like it's, that's, that's really, really good. National champions are, are just shy of 16 on that 16 attempts per touchdown. So, I mean, really good. Again, is it unsustainable? Was Purdue an anomaly? Cause they they suck, right? Probably. Um, but at the same time, it's like, like we were still 15.5, you know, going into the uh, into the Purdue game, even after the debacle, which was Northern Illinois. So we're, we're just getting better and refining it. So, like, it's very clear that Notre Dame's focus and, and effectivity on offense is rushing. Don't get me wrong. But, like, like it, again, we're looking long-term. I feel like a broken record here. We've got to do better in this one side of the offense that just, you know, is – it's it, it, it's exciting, right? Passing is exciting. So, so I don't know what we're gonna get out of Miami of Ohio. I mean, we we need if we don't beat the shit out of them, I think we'll be disappointed. I mean, that's that's that. There is some great disparity in statistics. Uh, and Jeff and Mike, if you want to speak, by all means, just jump on. Um, big disparity. Um, first off, Miami of Ohio. Whereas Notre Dame is very heavy on rushing touchdowns, Miami of Ohio is not. They have zero. They have zero rushing touchdowns, which is bad. Um, in fact, they only have two touchdowns total in the two games they have played. Those two games are Northwestern and Cincinnati. Um, but they're not good. They're 133rd in scoring offense. It's It's really, really bad. Um, it's second worst out of 134 teams in the country. So, so that ain't good. Um, and maybe it's a function of how their play calling is. I don't know, but they pass 63% of the time. Yikes. That's, that's really high. Um, now what is interesting is they, they obviously, because of their focus on a pass heavy offense, they do average 291 yards in these first two games. Now, what's interesting is Notre Dame has allowed 140 yards on their pass defense. So we're going to see some middling there of some statistics. You know, it might be a little higher. This is probably the best passing team that Notre Dame will have seen thus far, which is interesting, um, which is then maybe says, okay, well, what's one of the strengths of Notre Dame's defense? Our secondary, right? So is Benjamin Morrison, Xavier Watts, right? What are we going to see from that? So those yeah, are some hopefully of the... hopefully we see a couple of pick sixes. I would hope so. I mean, <sighs> it, we're in our own stadium. You know, we there, there's we know they're going to pass. I, you know, I didn't break down the roster of Miami of Ohio. Like, I mean, why would I? Um, based off of these numbers here that I'm showing macro stuff, like there's, there's the threat is low. Okay. Two passing touchdowns in two games, like, and that's it. Like talk, forget about it. Right. Like we should wipe the floor with this team. We should see a similar score, right? If we're not in the fifties, something is wrong. I'm serious. If mm -hmm. Notre Dame is not in the fifties, there is something wrong against this team. This team is not good. Okay. They're just, just not a good team right now. They, they, there's nothing on paper here that, that tells me they are. Okay. So, so we got to get in the fifties that, that let's do that. So we do need to blow them out just like how we did against Purdue. Great. Can you check their uh, stat on the passing defense for me, please? Passing defense uh, for them. They're not as good as Notre Dame, of course, but they, um, and, and this is a function of what Northwestern and Cincinnati are doing, right? So I, I don't know specifically how those two teams are doing. But to answer your question, they're 54th in the country. They have allowed uh, their opponents, Northwestern and Cincinnati, 182 yards on average um, through the air, right? So now we put up 216 against. Purdue, 
which seems kind of low in my opinion. <laughs> um, What's the rank on the ground on the uh, Russian for for Russian Miami defense. of Ohio rush defense yeah. or rush? They're not good. Yeah, they're, defense. They're, uh, Miami's defense on the rush. Yes, sir. Yeah, they they have allowed 182 and a half yards on the ground, and I don't think Northwestern and Cincinnati are like you know world breakers on running offense, right? That that's just one man's opinion. They're 109th in this stat. They're not good. Huge disparity here. Huge disparity. Now. Well, well, so- Hopefully that pays off. I mean, like, like national champions on average throw 280 yards through the air for the season, you know, which means, which means that against weaker teams, it's higher. It's in the three hundreds, right? Safe to say if Notre Dame could put up 50 points and 300 yards in the air, I think that might shut people like me up. I mean, can I say it that way? I think that's fair. Well, it definitely shut me up. That's for sure. I'd, <laughs> I'd get over it. I don't know about, can't speak for anyone else. I mean, look, nothing would give me greater pleasure for Riley Leonard to come out and, you know, have two rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns, you know, and then, and then hand the keys, the car o- keys of the car over to CJ Carr or Angeli or Mitchy. Like, and let, let the look, we should be up by 50 or 40 or whatever. And then the backups are going in and then the backups are scoring touchdowns in garbage time too. Like that's what good teams do to inferior opponents. Okay. So, so rest the starters, get the young guys, some reps, you know, and, and keep them engaged, etc. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's what you got to do. So, um, would you agree with the statement that we got to hang at least 30 points from here on out on every team to be like to get you know looked at in a better light for the tournament um that's a good question so so i I like looking at sagarin because it's all math and that's what we try to do with this show the problem i see is that loss to northern illinois is so bad in week two especially after week one okay and no, I'm not going to go back and see where we were in the AP after week one, after beating, um, after after beating Texas A&M because it goes against my principle of you shouldn't even be ranking teams until this week. Okay, so that's why we haven't talked about it until now. Now that it's week four, game four for Notre Dame. Okay, now we'll talk about rankings because that's where it kind of matters. But so there's probably some incumbency bias to Notre Dame's AP poll ranking that I'm looking at today, right? So you asked the question, we'll talk about it. I think then you have to start looking at, okay, it's in general, it is better for Notre Dame or or any team. It doesn't have to just be Notre Dame, any team to climb the mountain, right? If you start off high and you lose a game, you fall and usually fall pretty hard. Th- that's safe to say, right? Um, I mean, like, I think Florida State was ranked, right? They they still are still looking for a win, right? Um, I do think it's kind of funny that the the <coughs> the press has Notre Dame and LSU right next to each other, uh, along with Michigan. I don't know. I just find a lot of irony in that. Um, I mean, I, I I look at it another way. Don't look at it in terms of Notre Dame's ranking. Look at it in terms of the undefeated teams above them. There, Let's look at the AP. There are 15 teams that are undefeated in front of Notre Dame. The only one lost team is LSU. And who's that lost to? USC, right? <coughs> so, and then, then it's us, right? So we are the second best, quote unquote, one loss team that's ranked in the top twenty five in the in the AP. So I look at it more in terms of all these undefeated teams ahead of them: Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Utah, SC, the Penn State, Oregon, Miami, Missouri, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Texas. Fine. So look. You could go through, and we could do this in week four. I'm not going to, but like, okay, 
which of these teams are probably going to win their conference? Those are teams one through four in the playoffs. Then you go through the rest, and then you say, okay, these are teams five through eight, and then here's nine through 12 for the playoffs, right? The fact that Notre Dame is 17th, we're, we're clearly not, if you just look at numbers, right? Utah is number 12, right? Sure, fine. And it's probably a little different, a little bit of a shakeup here. And a lot of these teams are going to play play each other, right? You know, okay, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Missouri, uh, US, no, not USC, uh, and that's it. The, well, if you include LSU, there are seven SEC teams in front of us. Oh, Oklahoma, eight. <laughs> there are eight SEC teams in front of us, okay? Uh, Big Ten, you got Ohio State, that's one. Uh, Oregon, Penn State, USC, and that's it. Four Big Ten teams in front of us. Okay, where's Utah? They're, are they in the Big Twelve now? I think so. Yeah. So like, so so if you just look at it in terms of conferences, like like a lot of those teams are going to play each other. Things are going to kind of even out, and so naturally they're going to beat up on each other. And they're going to fall out. Okay. Notre Dame's schedule, other than Louisville and SC, we should win out. Like, and even if you just look at Sagar, Notre Dame should win out. Period. So to, to go back to your question about Notre Dame having to score 30 points to, to win, I, I don't look at it in terms of like you, you have to have a certain amount of points to win. Now, you should beat out inferior teams. I, I would look at it more as like, like looking the lens on yourself. If Notre Dame w- wishes to have national championship aspirations you should be putting up statistics that are in line with said national champions of the past 10 years are doing okay like the and if you did that the rest will take care of itself right i mean so let me put it another way national champions on average have a scoring margin of 25.7 points over their opponents for the season okay now that's a little under your thirty points. So by by to answer your question, yes, if Notre Dame put up thirty plus points, or or excuse me, won by thirty points, then yeah, I'm with you. Now scoring offense, national champions put up forty one points per game. So if you had rephrased the question and says if Notre Dame puts up forty points, I'd be like, hell yeah, sign me up. But if Notre Dame's just putting 30 points on the scoreboard, on our side of the scoreboard, I don't know if that that gets Notre Dame to, you know, the promised land or whatever. Like, because yeah, at, at the I end of the day, you have is... to win the games. Like, like if Notre Dame right. wins out and is 11-1, and one, based off of where they are going into game four, can they move up five spots and be that number 12 seed? Worst case? Yeah. No doubt. My clarification on that, yeah, I was saying they had to win by at least 30 points. Okay. That's, oh. <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. <coughs> well, that's I, what I meant. If Notre Dame beats USC by 30 points, you know, we're going to be happy over here because fuck that team. But the um, – if, if I'd if, like to see Notre Dame just cover the spread of every game. Yeah? Consistently cover the spread. Your better teams, you're going to have a closer spread, you know, against, you know, Miami of Ohio. It's 28 points. It's going to be a larger to, – to sit there and say a blanket 30 points or a blanket 25 points or a blanket 40 points. Let's just cover the spread. Let's How did the you derive that we're number? To beat them. How did you derive the 30 points? Did you pull out of the air? Did you it's, an, it's, an arbitrary, it's an arbitrary number. I just was, like, trying to think of how – I've been looking at our scoring scores over the last year, year and a half, and you know they've been sub forties and sub, and then point spreads are like less than two touchdowns mostly, and uh, I just don't. My 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 thought logic, and maybe it's flawed, and I'll accept it being flawed. This is that it seems that people don't the people that have the decision making kind of look at teams differently. 
that are putting up a shit ton of points on even when they don't need to. Like, they definitely saw, oh, like, they expected, okay, you beat Purdue by 50-some points. That's, yeah, you should be doing that. So I'm not saying that we should be doing that against USC. I'm just saying that, you know, it just seems like we should be scoring a lot of points against these substand- quote-unquote substandard teams. That's all. And well, I, mean, I don't know if you prescribe to that or not. That's, that's, that's fine. I'm just saying that that it just seems like what, and my and it kind of ties into the old adage that BK used to take his foot off the gas when he just like, eh, we're not going to do it. We're not going to score anymore. Yeah. Whereas it doesn't seem like Freeman does that. Freeman, if he, if we're going to score, we're going to score, which I admire, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I just I mean, was throwing it out there for a topic to discuss. But uh, l- let I me counter with that because, because I, I, I may disagree with you a little bit. Now I don't have Florida state up here, but I'm looking at Alabama from last year. Alabama was sneaking by opponents. I mean, literally. And they did beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, which is why they made the playoffs, right? So don't get me wrong. Um, and then they, they went down to the wire against Michigan, okay? Right. Alabama last year in their quote-unquote, like, difficult games, okay? The best win they had, uh, they had a 14-point they had a 14 point win at home versus Ole Miss, and another 14-point win over Tennessee. Uh, and, and I guess they did beat the shit out of out of uh, LSU. So good job, Nick Saban. Um, these other like 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 the Iron Bowl, they they squeaked out squeaked out a three-point victory. They beat Georgia by three points as well. Um, you know, I mean, they I only they only beat I South think I see Florida where you're trying by to go with this, but we're points. talking about Alabama, though. We're talking about Alabama, and fair, and, 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 and Alabama you know had a good strength have... of schedule. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, like to get back to your like, oh, we have to put 30 points, we have to win by 30 points. That's not the case, right? Alabama's strength of schedule is it, last year was far superior to what Notre Dame has in front of them this year, right? But then if you go back to um, Florida State, you know, Florida State was. You know, I don't think they were squeaking by teams, you know, and and I right. actually thought originally that they got snubbed out of the playoffs. You're undefeated. You win every game. I don't care how it quote unquote looks. You win every game. But that again, that's a four team playoff. OK. Um, and, and so now here here's Notre Dame, you know, strutting their stuff going into Miami of Ohio and maybe we're saying that because it is Miami of Ohio, right? You know, and then we're playing in Yankee stadium and we're, you know, like we're doing all these things, you know, and we're playing two service academies and you just, whatever. It's just, I, I don't know. Look year in year out, everything is different, you know, and it's all about, College football is all about ranking yourself, your team, relative to everybody else. So as the season goes on, as the years go on, you know, the complexion of the environment is different year in and year out. And that's what makes it really interesting. Um, Going forward, you know, it's I. I... (sighs) Look, to answer your question. If Notre Dame wins by 30 points, I believe 100% they will be in this 12-team playoff. But the fact that it is a 12-team playoff now is real, is completely new, which is great because that mean, that means there's way more opportunity for Notre Dame to get to a postseason game, which is awesome. Okay, We would love it to be that first game in Notre Dame Stadium, against some, you know, SEC school or something like that. You know, that would be awesome. I don't think that's going to happen now, to be honest. Well, again, it depends on what happens above them. It really depends on what the teams, what the teams in front of Notre Dame do, right? Well, and Notre, sure. and, I mean, and Notre Dame could else. win. They, I looked at their schedule, and they can win all the way through. They can do it. They should. They yeah, should. They do. They're ranked better and than they do, everybody in Sagarin. So, 
I don't know. But you're know. saying and Notre I, Dame I, needs I'm, style points now? Is that what you're saying? Because they're let, let me, I don't. I just say it's an arbitrary number because it seems like the selection committees are kind of arbitrarily pulling stats that really don't mean anything. I mean, what, to, what stats you know, do they use? I mean, I, I don't even... They, that's the thing. That's they're the thing. clearly not talking like, about yards per point and the shit that I talk about on this show. Which, by the way, Notre my, Dame's yards point. per point is really good. It's 11.9. National champions are 11.8 in this statistic. So, you know, hey, good on us. No, like, like I, I am never going to think for a minute that there's some, you know, mathematical formula and... and quite frankly, logic based off of numbers that the committee is using to rank these teams. Okay. No, no fucking way. All right. Um, now that upsets me as an analytical person that's running this show for, you know, now you're five, but that being said, look, look, that is college football. I, I like to turn the argument inward because now that we've lost this game, we have no control. We have lost not this game coming up, but the Freudian slip, uh, but the Northern Illinois game, like we are not in control of our destiny. And so now the opportunity to be host hoist hosting a home playoff game, uh, you know, in December is uh, it may not happen because of a bad loss now now we could make up for that if we start banging it out and and crushing everybody we play i i do think that notre dame needs a quote-unquote signature win can i put it that way notre dame needs to win big against a quote big opponent on the schedule and right now there's only two of them left on the schedule louisville at home and at usc and quite frankly because of recency bias, because of, you know, like, like go, go back two years ago, Caleb Williams. It's going to need to be the SC game. It it's has to be the to SC be the game SC. that red snapper will be at the, um, cool. he'll be representing. Do you need the flag? Should we, should we send you the flag? Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, people can find us, find red snapper. Um, I think those leprechauns is planning to go to the game too, but the, um, Sweet. No, the 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 recency by like 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 two years ago, Caleb Williams won the Heisman because he played well against Notre Dame in his own stadium at the end of the year. Okay, um, let's let's ignore the fact, I guess, that he lost to Utah, which is fun. But point being, um, that recency bias of that game really helped his campaign. Same thing when Alabama beats number one Georgia in the SEC championship game. That clearly is why they made the playoffs, right? So, so the recency bias is a real thing, and I I hate to say this because I never want SC to be successful. But if SC runs the table and Notre Dame runs the table and Notre Dame beats them in their own house, I don't care if we win by one point or thirty. That looks really, really good for Notre Dame, just to win that game, in the, in the optics of of if SC runs the table, because SC will probably be a top ten, top five team, but I would argue that we'll probably be sniffing top ten too, if we win out and and we we get down to Southern Cal at the end of the year, and that that I mean we're we're jumping down the down the rabbit hole here of of you know you know, seven games from now. Well, it's not quite seven, you know, but can I do math? <laughs> eight games from now, seven games, wait, one, two, three, seven. Yeah. Seven, eight, eight games from now. So I don't know the, I feel like you're just rambling and we're talking in circles here. Justin Roush, you're there. Save us, man. Come in from Colorado. <laughs> come out of the, come out of the mountains. Maybe he's not there. I don't know. Maybe he's just listening. I did send him the invite. So yeah, I just we'll sent him one too. We'll see. Uh, I mean, if no one else wants to talk, you know, I, I don't mean to shout William down. I, I hit 
it's a great question about should I, if Notre I, Dame wins out and and the it's the ideal of ideals if they if they could actually win by thirty points every single then yes one hundred percent we're in the playoff and I think we've got a good shot at actually hosting because yeah somebody from the top is going <laughs> to fall so there is going to be an upset there is every year so yeah. we'll we'll definitely see something and when we don't even bias, if we can if we can put SC on their butts. You know, look at it a couple of years ago. It, we did, and that was a beautiful thing. So it's. Let's, I would like SCU to happen. lose every single game they play because I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you SC. Guys, you guys got me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, what's up, Justin? What's up, guys? How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome right, back to the show. Yeah. I was sorry. I was laying in bed with my daughter. <laughs> All right. But I was, but I was listening. And then I, uh, she fell asleep, so I popped out and wanted to say hi. I, yeah. I missed a little up? bit, but um, that was me. That week. was me with my. Uh, I was putting my kids to bed, and uh, yeah, toddler would not want to go to sleep. So I was just like, dude, you gotta go to sleep, man. Like, uh, I gotta start the show. That's that's why we started close to ten o'clock tonight. So it's a little late. Uh, what? Okay, uh, so I didn't miss that. I didn't miss too much. <laughs> no, I mean, we we're, we're, we, you might be one of our last contributors here, unless Mike jumps the on. Basic sum up is none of the answers for the quarterback controversy were answered because of the Purdue game. If anything, it added more presto logs to the fire. Run, run, and the then, damn ball. And that, yeah, and then Marshall is or not Marshall, Miami <laughs> of Ohio. <laughs> Is is going to be a rubber stamp in my personal opinion. I think we're going to see the exact same game again next week. So yeah, yeah. It, I don't know. I still got I still got my concerns, obviously, about pushing it down the field. That's nice. We can go. I thought about that during the Purdue game. I'm like, well, I wish we would have done this last week against NIU. But at the same time, I just feel like there's going to become a point where we're going to have to push it, and I just hope we'll be able to step up and do it. When there's a we'll defense, probably do it against like box. fucking Virginia or some team that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> when yeah. when we get forced into having to throw the ball because they've got seven eight guys in the box and it's a stout run defense, then it's gonna be a challenge with Bradley Leonard. It will be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're we're Notre Dame. We want a national championship. That's what we all want. That's what we yeah. do. I mean, here. that is the I'm ultimate like, goal, no doubt. That I, is the goal, right? And so I'm feeling like, fuck, do we have what it takes? Or are we just going to do this 10-2 and two or whatever we get to, even if we get in the playoff? I don't know. I have to see more to, to have any sense Not if we confidence. don't improve on passing touchdowns. Like, like if I just look on the yeah. offensive side of the ball – the passing game is lacking. Okay, we're 111th in passing touchdowns in the country. Out of 134 teams, we're 104th in the country in passing yards. Grant, that's yard points, and it's the last stat I keep track of. But it's you know it's it's ranked 25 out of there's 24 that are quote unquote better and more important. Um, but our passing, I, you missed this, Justin, probably passing attempts per touchdown as a team. Notre Dame is 44 and a half. 44 passing att- attempts as a team before we throw a passing touchdown. It's terrible. Wow. That's not going to get it done. Bad. Okay. So, so, so I, rather than, than looking downfield at, you know, you know, hoisting the trophy here, it's like, look, I just need us to get better week in, week out, you know, and yeah. that is why, you know, I'm, I'm having this internal conflict on, on one hand, I'm very RTDB and Purdue sucks at stopping our run. So just keep running it because you're here mm-hmm. to win the game. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, we're not a complete football team and good yeah. teams that win championships also pass and you have to do both. You know I mean? Shit. Look at Michigan, Michigan last year. Here, let's pull this up. All right. Look, sign, put sign stealing aside, right? You know, it, it is what it is. Um, that's the champions. Come on, Michigan. All right, look. They were seventh in total touchdowns. They were number one in scoring defense, which is really why they won because of their defense. It was really good. Uh, scoring offense, fourteenth. R- rushing touchdowns. They were number one. Hey, we could do that. 
now yeah. passing touchdowns, they were with McCarthy. They were ranked 42nd in the country. It's actually the worst of the in the last 10 years, but it's not the worst since I've been keeping stats. Now there's two teams. Let, let me put it this way. M- m- look, maybe this is what we need to need to shoot for. May- maybe we're on to something here. Michigan ran the ball very well, quite frankly. They had a really good defense. Passing McCarthy was serviceable, right? Um, he ended up with the uh, how many did he have? Twenty four passing touchdowns. At least Michigan as a team. I don't, I don't know him specifically, but 24 as a team. That is the lowest since 2011, Alabama. Alabama, this, I mean, this is going way back, but Alabama in 2011. That was probably Greg McElroy, yeah. No, that was not McElroy. It was, oh, it was A.J. McCarron. Oh, yeah. It was it. Yes. And then okay. McCarron improved dramatically from you know that year to his final year. Um, Alabama had 16 passing touchdowns in 2011. They were ranked 76 in the country. In 2009, Alabama had 17 passing touchdowns. They were ranked 64th in the country. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we should shoot for. But maybe... This is we'll end we'll end the show with this because this I think no no one else is gonna fucking talk about this number one and no number two no one else has the the information at their fingertips like I do here to uh, to talk about this to actually compare Notre Dame to national champions in this stat specifically and Notre Dame maybe needs to be more like Alabama of two that let me put it another way Notre Dame fans. Hey, let's be like Alabama in 2011 and, or 2009. Shit, even 2012. But 2000, 2011, 2009. With respect to the passing touchdowns. Or even like Michigan last year. I know we don't like talking about Michigan because we don't like them and sign stealing and all this other shit. But point being, look, that's what these teams did to win the title. Now, they were really good in other stats. Like, you know, Alabama was 12th in the country in rushing touchdowns that same year, ninth in the, you know, two years before that, um, 20th in scoring offense in 2011, 25th in total touchdowns, right? So there's some other good juju going on, but I guarantee you, we look at defense, Alabama 2011, number one. Rush defense, number one. Total defense, number one. That's why they won the title in 2011. Yeah. Okay. So you can have a weak passing game. But if we want to win the title, you better have a top five defense. Yeah. And that's what Michigan did last year. That's what Alabama has done in teams of yore. Okay. And, and maybe maybe Notre Dame is the rushing anomaly this year and we do we we are, you know, just crazy good running the ball and with Riley Leonard, especially coming off of this game, it looks like it. But you still yeah. have to have that potential oh, threat. I'm my juices you flowing. See, maybe we should just embrace literally, this. Literally <laughs> the anomaly of Notre Dame being a sixty five percent run play offense and we just stack points because our running back room and our quarterback can just run all over the field our young offensive line getting reshuffled because of injuries again puts it together and we just march down the field and just bruise people win time of possession yeah. and everything else i find it very difficult to see that we can sustain that to a national championship because at some point we are going to run into a stout run defense. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I, and we're going to have to throw the ball. And, and with, with, with some of our performance right now today, and granted, we're only three games in, but 
I mean, our our rush defense right now is 63rd in the country. Our total defense is 28th. Our scoring defense is 25th. Um, those are the top three defensive stats that we need to be top five for this scenario of run the ball only and with stout defense. Like, we're not there yet on the defensive side of things. Now, granted, granted, we it's, it's, it's early in the year. We're comparing ourselves to teams that have played nobody. We played two power five teams, right? So, so like, like, look, we're we're averaging right now on scoring defense, our points to twelve points a game, and we're ranked twenty fifth. Like, there's a very great disparity between those two, and the reason for that is national champions over the last ten years, their scoring defense is fifteen point six points. And that averages out to a rank of nine. Okay. So so are are we are we there from a numerical value? Yeah, especially on total defense. Total defense right now, we've limited our three opponents to 265 yards, yard points on defense. National champions are just shy of 300, 298. So we're there on two of these three. Okay. So so maybe we've just revealed something here with Justin Roush, who will be at Stanford with Natalie. What's up? Let's go. Let's go. Maybe we should stop our belly aching about Riley Leonard. Uh, okay, look. Is we'll see what happens on Saturday, but if, if we he have puts up another three rushing touchdowns, then I'm going to embrace this. Yes, and one or yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, forget the passing. Let's just look at his. What is his skill set? It's it's what he did against Purdue. It's rushing the football. If he can continue to do that and put up another, just like what Red Snapper said, yes. Rather than look at what we don't have, let's look at what we do have and look at what we quite frankly, can control. Um, all right, we're not going to make him a passing pocket passer. We're not going to make him... He's not going to magically get better against Louisville and passing the touchdown. He might, but seems unlikely now at this point. If he didn't do it against Purdue or Miami of Ohio. Certainly didn't do it against Northern Illinois. So maybe we just embrace that. And we just go to the old old guard here of the model of run the ball, stop the run. Can we just do that? Like, like, who's not going to like that? It's not sexy. It's not exciting. People will say it's not modern. You know, Dude, we'll... I got, I got, I got, I got to cut in here. I am having flashbacks as a Bronco fan, fucking winning a playoff game with Tim Tebow. We <laughs> won a game at Arrowhead when he completed two fucking passes. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what I feel like it needs to look like. Like, we, he didn't do anything special. We ran the ball. We played good defense, and we had good time management. Like, yeah, that's how they did it. And and I guess if that's the way we go, that's the way we go. I, I think if, if if the Notre Dame offense improves in the passing game against Miami of Ohio, then that is, I think, the crossroads here. If where where we can be, quote unquote, more well-rounded on offense, but. If it's the same thing of what we saw in Purdue, which is kind of what we've predicted will happen, then I say just embrace it, and I will shut up about the passing thing. So I, I think I think we'll let the team decide what they want to do, what they want their identity to be this year. But the evidence is out there. The evidence is in national champions. You know, Michigan last year and Alabama years before that, where you didn't have to have quite frankly, a very good passing, you know, top 25 even passing quarterback defense or pa- not defense. You do need a top 25 defense, top 25 passing attack. You don't, you don't need it to win a title. If your opponent can't stop your running game and your defense can stop everything they do. I mean, don't get me wrong. My rosary this week is that, you know, Purdue was the the game that Riley Leonard gets his confidence and his mojo back. Yeah. And 
shows up and just starts dropping dimes against yeah. Miami of Ohio, which builds his confidence and he gets his swagger back even more. Yeah. Do you know what? That's where my rosary is going this week. Hmm. Nice. Nice. Were those joyful mysteries or sorrowful mysteries of your rosary? What? <laughs> Where are you going with this? It's a, luminous? It Were they the luminous praying. because he's seeing the light? It, it, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's going to be the luminous. <laughs> the luminous mysteries? Everyone likes the luminous mysteries. <laughs> they're the new ones. Because they're new. Because they're, they're new. new. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> One of them's a wedding at Cana. Let's turn water to wine. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Yeah, I think yeah, I think we might have stumbled onto something here that let's uh let's just embrace this team for what they are. And that's not just to be like all buddy buddy like like Jason and those leprechauns of oh we're we're gonna be cheerleaders of the university. No, we'll still we'll keep keep being factual and related. But if we're gonna be based in statistics and based into what past teams have done that have been successful. Maybe it's a little outdated, but when Michigan did what they did last year and there was no doubt in my mind or anyone in America's mind, when they played Washington in that national championship game, everyone knew who the better team was. And it was not So really, it was not really random question. What is the quote on uh, the shirt this year? The shirt? The shirt. Isn't it Wake Up the Echoes? Uh Man, probably. I don't know. They it's have... the Four Horsemen, isn't it's it? It's the Four Horsemen. That's because of the 100 years of the Four Horsemen, and we're playing at fucking Yankee Stadium, I, which, which I have mixed feelings now. When I when when the wife bought the shirts, they showed up at the house. She didn't even tell me she did it, probably because she knew I was <laughs> bitching about them. You know, and I was like, oh, I don't like the color. And like, you know, the, and the then, I, then the I see it, and I'm ring, like, ring okay, I like it. Yeah, no, she she's on point. Like usually she buys something and I'm like, why'd you buy that? And then later on I'm like, Yeah, that was a good purchase. That was a good purchase. I do like the shirt this year. <laughs> I, I have I have turned it around, you know, she's got one, I got one, the toddler's got one, you know, like they don't even make baby sizes anymore, which is dumb. Notre Dame, what the fuck? Why don't you make what you don't like babies? You don't have, like uh, come on, man. Like maybe don't don't make as many, right? Like, I don't know. All right. The shirt. Let's put this in Google. What does it look like? You know, okay, men's. Cool. It's got the right. four horsemen on the front, but I don't think it says "Wake Up the Echoes." The, no, the tradition. What? Continue. That's not it. Notre Dame. The shirt. There we go. Okay. Uh, it says the tradition continues on the back. It does not say "Wake Up the Echoes." Well, if it's the tradition continues, we got the four horsemen. Hey, that's a la RTDB. So. Well, and that's how the, that's it. how the uh, the four horsemen were successful. Because I mean, I don't know if Newt Rockney had invented the forward pass or, or was using it as much, but it would be hard pressed to find uh, Notre Dame's uh, game play by play statistics in 1924. I'd be very curious what that looked like. I'm sure <laughs> if we overlap that with Notre Dame, we'd be like, "Oh my gosh, we look terrible." Actually, no, yeah, because you're winning games. A little bit to a little bit. So, yeah. The tradition continues. The tradition continues. Scotch and spreadsheets on the Fighting Irish Faithful show. Justin Roush, uh, last thoughts before we shut her down. No, man, I think we touched it all. I'm excited. Um, I, I was really jacked up before NIU and hit rock bottom. But, you know, this was actually really good to hear. That was your rock statistics. bottom? Oof, man. Well... I mean, I was fired up for NIU. I was like, I don't know if you remember the podcast. I was like, we're fucking, we're doing this shit. Yeah, let's do it. And then, and then we throw up a fucking. A. That's because I started the post game show of uh, with Van Halen Panama after we beat uh, Texas A and M, and I'm all like using graphical metaphors about the data points are high to the right, you know, and uh, which I still believed I at the time, you know, it's just. I don't know. You do a great job. I was jacked up, but now you know that that, that is the point. Day. I, I think, am I trying think, to create excitement. Yes. Yeah. So. The, the point. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's why you get on and do this. Um, I think it's important for us to decide who we want to be. Um, just like Red Snapper said, let's embrace what we're going to do and let's fucking do it. Let's fucking do it. Put that. But in I do want. I did want to hear you what you thought of of Angeli. Um, I was very happy with his performance in Ross Aid. Uh, we talked about that earlier in the show. Um, he averaged a passing touchdown every four and a half 
passes. <laughs> so, I mean, that does not suck. Um, I think he might have had the hero button or the turbo button on the, on his uh, um, Sega Genesis mash down too much when he's standing in the pocket staring down a receiver waiting for him to get open and then just clobbered. Now, he didn't fumble it, so that's cool. But he did take an unnecessary sack when it was like, dude, there's a guy running straight at your face and bam. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, okay, like, look, this is an NBA jam or NFL blitz here because that's kind of what you look like you were doing there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't. Oh, uh, geez. You know, the. Um... It's hard to say. I'm still on the fence. Like, I, I, I look. I, 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 I like the part of me is like, man, I really just want to see. This like I part. said, me threw some Presto logs on that quarterback controversy. Me bitching about you know things about how I want. Look, I want Riley Leonard to throw passing touchdowns because I look at most successful national champion quarterbacks and they do that. Now, we just laid out, and it took Justin to jump on tonight to tell us that hey. There's actually a sample size over here that Notre Dame actually looks a little better and resembles better these guys. Alabama, Alabama, Michigan. Like, like, yeah, that could be Notre Dame. And that actually makes me really excited. And it's kind of changed. It's given me a, like some new a new hope. Maybe we should go out with some Star Wars music. I was going to pull up some old-time Notre Dame stuff, but... Maybe we should change it. Maybe we got a new hope here in what we're about to do. All right. You know, fuck it. We're re- more, we man. are renaming the podcast. A <laughs> Notre Dame, a new, a new hope. hope. A new hope. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Notre Dame, a new hope. Thank you, Justin you know, Roush. And, and You're welcome. Thanks for having me on, guys. I, I'm, I'm with you in the new points. hope. Let's go. Go Irish. That's all right. Go Irish. Absolutely. Thanks for joining Go us. Irish. And if Williams' 30 points show up in the first half, Angeli's going to be in in the third quarter throwing two touchdowns. So yeah. we, we might still hit the passing stats as a team, just not with Riley Leonard. Oh, come on. Windows working on it. Come on. All right. <laughs> I think I think we'll end the show there with Justin Roush. Uh, and I think I think we'll 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 go with that. But um I, I think we, we, we've stumbled on something. This is not how I thought the show was going to go. And this is why we talk things out. We get people's opinion. And, you know, we were talking about the 30 points thing with William. And as proponents of RTDB, I'm, I'm liking it. See, that's the thing. I like, really like my, my bias is to just stick with the running. Go- like, like, I'm not pissed about what we did. And if we did that every game... And we hoist a fucking trophy. I don't give a shit how many passing touchdowns we had. So let's fucking go out there. We got a new hope. Maybe all we have to do is run the ball and stop the run. And play good and play good defense. Yeah, That's stop it. the run. Play good defense. Limit our opponents. And we'll go out there. And maybe Riley Leonard with his baby face looks like Luke fucking Skywalker. I don't care. <laughs> Let's go do it. I love yeah. It. I love it. I love it. Shit, yeah, dog. All right. We're about to, to throw a grappling hook here up against on the thing. Grab Princess Leia. We'll swing across the chasm here. <sighs> this is the Fighting Irish Faithful Show. Thank you for joining us. Notre Dame, a new hope. Run the damn ball. Ha <laughs> ha! Go Irish, beat Red Hawks. <laughs>